have someone in Burlington saying, oh, that's too far to drive. So we have a polling location in Burlington, but it's actually Deer Creek. I don't think we do. We don't do early voting. We do early. We've had done Burlington in the past. Yeah. Yeah. On, election, yeah, on election day, we're on in election Burlington. Day. And then early voting, okay. we are in, we are also in Burlington. Okay. So you're going to take the voting machines out for the early voting and then bring them back? Yes. Put them in storage and yes. take them out again for the actual election? Right? Once they're out of the, the storage room downstairs, they stay in our museum in, in the corner. Um, we don't put them back down in the store because that room is secured because nobody else has access to it. So we are allowed to leave them. I'm the only one that has the key to that room. Um, so we are, well, I think Keith has one, but which is the custodian, but he's, he's not allowed to go into the room unless one of us is with him, either my, myself or my staff or an election board member. Which today he needed to go down into the room that was having issues, so one of my staff members had to go down with him. So. Any other questions? I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion to be adjourned immediately. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three seventeen. I do have a question on like training. Training, is there scheduled dates for training at this point? I have not scheduled those yet. Okay. And it will actually be required that everyone attends the training or they won't be able to work the polls because there's a lot of things that have changed. Um, and so even if you're a seasoned worker, um, something might have changed. So. Will there, be, will there be more than one training session? Yes. I'll, I'll, I'm going to try to schedule. It? I'm sorry. Where are those posted, the training? They'll, they'll be on my website. Um, they'll be in my office posted. And they'll, I can get a copy to the comment as well. And once you're, once you're selected as a poll worker, the, the parties make sure that you are aware of it. Sure. They want you to show up. Well, and I'll have a list of every everyone. Notifies them. Yeah, yeah, I notify. I have a list of everyone that's working the polls, where you're working, and when you're working. And then you'll have a scheduled um, time that you would come in. Um, and we had some last year that came in um, on a non-scheduled time because they couldn't come during one of the scheduled times, and I just did it one on one. I mean, it's it's not. A, it wasn't a lot of changes last year. Or not last year. I'm sorry. Year before. Sorry, I keep that that year off throws me off. I know. <laughs> it's a killer. Yeah, it throws me off. It's like I really felt like we had an election last year, but we didn't. Uh, is, is there an Indiana election uh, manual of any kind that somebody that's you just you can look at it on the uh, secretary of state? I mean, this is the this is like my administrator manual, and then he has candidate manual. Um, I don't know what all you have over there. Yeah. But, so I mean, they're all individual depending on what your. Okay. So the the information is actually contained in the General Assembly Indiana Code. Okay. So it's in I forget what section thirteen or something like that, but. All that information, but that's all legal that's what I stuff, legal and you're going to have to read through that. Yeah. So the easiest way is just to come to the training if you're going to be a poll worker, and they can give it to you in layman's terms. Because okay. I'm not an attorney either. Yeah. Is it, also, is it correct to say that people could, could vote anywhere within the county, obviously, uh, regardless of precinct? Yes. Mm, that's what. When we, when we went to vote centers, that's what we did. We went from 19 locations to six. And yeah, I'm, I'm kind of glad now that we did because 
19 times 5 is how many workers you need per location. And now we're only needing 30. And, and, and trying to get 30 now versus 10 years ago is very difficult. It's, it's hard to get 30 people that want to go. I, I think, that, I mean, when I started, I started in um, voter registration um, in 2010. And I drove out to the 19 locations and set the machines up by myself. I set everything up. Well, they weren't, they weren't machine machines, but I did all, all on my own because it was not, it was a lot of driving, but it wasn't that intense. And we, you might have locations that only have 40 people vote the entire election day. You know? So that's why they went to vote centers, because it was more economical, especially when they went to machines. But we try to have at least six machines at all locations, uh, which is... Plenty for some and maybe not enough for others, but... What was your name? You still got the paper books in the, in the uh, voting locations. We look to see if the person comes in and vote the paper books. Are you still in there? Is that book disappearing? There is, there, there is no book. It's now electric. It's an electric poll book. Which... Uh, which is it means it's on a computer. Yes. Yeah. So it's no longer... You don't have the paper itself. It's... It's an electronic book, and then I get a report the next day. Everyone that voted. So um, the person comes from another precinct. Their name will still show up in the, in the electric book as if it was their precinct, right? Oh, Roger, thank you. Right, because we're we're not set up as precincts anymore. I understand. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.